Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now over the years, I have reviewed a lot of handheld gaming devices. Some great, some eh, maybe not so great, and some so niche that they've definitely found their fans. I'm looking at you, Playdate. And today I'm gonna be reviewing the WoW Cube, which is one of the coolest, weirdest, and possibly most confusing gaming devices I've ever messed with. Imagine a Rubik's Cube that's all digital, it's packed with technology, and it runs games and apps. Oh yeah, and it's really expensive, but is it worth it? And who's it for? Let's find out. We're gonna go ahead and start with a quick unboxing. Now this was sent to me for review. However, it's gonna go back to them after this video is done. Um, all of the opinions are my own, obviously. And the way I understand it, there are three different options for buying this. The base is $300 and then it goes up to $600 depending on how many accessories you want. And notice that that seems to be on sale. So I guess in the future, it could be $500 to start up to $1,000. Whew. Inside of here, you'll see that it has a gift card for $30 that could be used towards getting games and apps in their store. And I'm gonna show that here in a bit. As well as a quick start guide, you'll notice that they also include a cleaning cloth, which this thing definitely needs. To call this thing a fingerprint magnet would be an understatement. Here's the device itself, and you'll notice it's about the same size as a real Rubik's Cube, although instead of having nine squares per side, this has four. A little further down, you notice it has a charging dock that is very unique to this device. It has that very thin blade there that has to squeeze in between the, the cubes to charge it. It also comes with some cables that you're gonna to need to charge it, as well as a screwdriver. I thought this was kind of curious. Well, it turns out that I'm gonna need that screwdriver in a bit. To turn it on, you just simply rotate it and you'll see that all of the different sides light up. And this came with a bunch of apps and games pre-installed on it. Now, the goal of this WoW Cube is to try and mix more traditional 3D puzzle-like cubes with digital video games. So that's what you're seeing right here. And it definitely makes it feel very unique compared to anything else I have messed with. And honestly, at first glance, when you have this in your hand, it looks and feels very cool. I do need to say though that this is a pre-production review unit, so I'm getting it a little bit early compared to their customers when it comes out later this year. So I'm told that this is not 100% final and that some of the hardware and software may change a little bit before they go into full production for actual consumers. So what's going on here? Well, this is the really cool part because it is basically eight individual mini computers here each with their own rechargeable battery, as well as three high resolution screens. So all told, it makes up 24 total screens on all six sides. So basically they've taken the idea of a Rubik's cube, but made it completely digital. And there's a couple things that you notice first, and that is that the screens look really cool. They are very high definition. They look great. And the other thing is how those screens interact with each other and how they know their position on the cube. So for instance, you see here with this screensaver like thing, you'll notice as it moves and morphs that it goes over to the other screens. But yet keep in mind that these are individual computers. So they're not actually, I guess, wired together in, in a traditional sense. You can see that more clearly here in this car racing game. So this is a game where the car, the red car right there, is automatically traveling down the path that is set. And you you basically wanna pick up these power-ups and not crash it. And so you see me here where I'm turning the cube and therefore changing the route that the car is gonna take. And it does it all in real time. And again, you can see it goes over onto the next side of it. It just, uh, it just is it's a really cool experience. Here's a similar game to that that involves a ladybug. And in this one, the ladybug's going a little bit faster. And so it requires you to be more on your toes 
because if the ladybug hits a wall, then it's game over. But again, I like how it's using both 3D physical space as well as these digital screens to give you a fairly unique experience here, don't you think? Now, as you can imagine, there definitely is some things that you have to kind of get used to with this. The first one being is that you would assume with these high resolution screens, that they would be touch sensitive and they're not in any way. You know, we're used to a world with smartphones and iPads that you can just simply touch a screen to like say launch an app, but that's not the case here. You actually have to double tap to launch the app that you want to go into. And that for some reason doesn't always work as you would expect. Sometimes it seems to register and launch the, the app or the game just fine. And other times, I don't know why, but you have to sit there and you actually have to whack on it, you know? <laughs> it's really weird. Like, I guess it's supposed to kind of shake it a little bit or move something in there, but for whatever reason, some of these games just don't want to launch. And I get it, I know why they probably didn't want to do touch because it's a cube in your hands and you're twisting and turning it the whole time. So I'm sure it's a very hard thing to try to build around, but Initially, it's like, uh, you know, you would have just assumed that touch would work. The other problem I ran into, and this is not good, is that after a couple hours, one of the computers just stopped working. And when it did, as you can see here, it affected all the others. So basically this thing, it wasn't bricked because I think those other computers were running, but there was nothing I could do to try to get this to work. Normally, if you put the cube on its charger, you can hit this little reset button underneath and that resets it if it ever gets in kind of a weird state. But as you can see here, it didn't help at all. And so at this point, I kind of thought I was dead in the water that this uh, video would be over at this point. But then I remembered that they included a screwdriver in the box. So I was like, oh, okay. So what I realized that you can pull those, those cubes apart just a little bit and loosen them up to disassemble the computers from themselves. And you see them here. So this is a completely self-contained computer here. Well, I could see that the battery was disconnected from the printed circuit board. So that was my big clue. It's like, oh, okay. During just the normal usage of this thing, maybe while I was double tapping on the top of it, it somehow disconnected the battery. And thankfully, once, once I basically connected that battery up to it, it fired up, I reassembled it all, and it just magically came back to life. So I don't know if this is because I have an early production unit or what, but just be aware that they are including a screwdriver in here, so maybe this is something that they know that could happen or you might need to get into if you're troubleshooting stuff, but thankfully it worked for me and I was able to continue on with it. Here's a demo of a game called Play Ball. And in this one, you simply twist the cube and it reconfigures the play field. And uh, then you're basically using gravity and the accelerometer to move the ball around to pick up these little power-ups. I don't think there's a full game here yet. I found this pretty easy, but again, a neat little proof of concept. Here's a more traditional puzzle where you are trying to match up the wings of a butterfly. So you wanna to try to find the, the same color of wings for that butterfly, and then it'll take them away and it kind of remixes it up. And so basically it's almost like, a, again, like a Rubik's cube, but instead of having just simple colors, I guess, you're trying to match butterfly wings. Obviously, because this is inspired by a Rubik's Cube, there is a generic version of that game also available here to play. Here's a version of the popular mobile game Cut the Rope, but for this, it's modified for the WoW Cube. In this game, you're trying to get this little piece, I think it's a piece of candy, into the mouth of this green, I don't even know what it is, it's like a dinosaur or something like that. And basically what you do is you use the accelerometer uh, to to stretch out the, the piece of candy on the rope and then you cut it by turning the cube. And so this is kind of a clever use of the cube and a more traditional, simple game. I thought this was pretty fun. Here's another demo of a game called Blockbuster, which basically kind of feels a little bit like Pong meets, I don't know, I guess like Super Breakout or something like that. Uh, it definitely feels like a demo. It doesn't feel like it's running very well probably needs to be optimized a little bit more. You can see that it's kind of slow. 
There's also a version of, I think it's called the Magic Cube. That's the thing where you ask it a question and then shake it up and then, in this case, you twist it and it gives you a randomized answer. Is Burnout the best arcade racing game ever made? Outlook good. There's also gonna be a bunch of widget support for this. So for instance, here you see a timer. Uh, there's also gonna be a stock ticker. There's gonna be a weather app for this. Basically designed that if you have it sitting like at your desk, maybe in the background, it could then be displaying stuff in real time. The way you get new apps on this is by using Bluetooth from your smartphone. So there is an app in the app store that you download and then you just connect to it. And then through there, you can install free games as well as some that cost money. They advertise that they're gonna have 40 games and apps for this. And basically that goes from anywhere from free, like I said, uh, some of them are about $5 Canadian. Some of them are up to $10 Canadian. So pretty much in that kind of like, I don't know, what is that? Kind of like mobile app range, I guess is what you'd call that price. I didn't see anything over $10. And the way that they install is really interesting because basically it sends it over and then it updates the firmware of all eight computers. And you can see that right here, it's so cool. I love this type of tech nerdy stuff here because you can see that it's updating the firmware of a few of them. And then once those are done, it seems to move to the others and updates the firmware for each of those. So it's a pretty interesting little system, don't you think? This thing definitely looks cool at night sitting next to your bed. Now, is it $300 cool? As far as battery life goes, I was getting anywhere from two to three hours, it seemed like. Um, they advertise that you can get up to five hours maybe i guess on some of the, the like screensaver type things uh, i i didn't i didn't really see that so i guess it really just depends on the game and maybe how much you're using it what do i think of this thing well you know technically this is a pretty cool little device right you can tell that they put a lot of time and effort into building this out both in the the hardware and also the software However, because of its interface, you really gotta love puzzle games, right? You gotta love these kind of games that you're just gonna be twisting and tilting. That's really all that this thing supports. And honestly, at $300 to start, that's a, that's a tall order. Like, I don't even know who that customer would really be because, you know, at that price point, you're talking about someone who could just go out and buy a Switch. Now I know a Nintendo Switch and this are very different devices, but as far as entertainment value, it, man, it'd be hard to recommend this. You know what I'm saying? And I showed this to a bunch of people trying to get their initial reaction. And you know, everyone who picked it up was like, wow, this is really neat. But they played for about 15 minutes or so. And unless they're really into puzzle games, you're gonna get bored of it fairly quick. And then I would ask them, okay, how much do you think it's worth or how much would you pay? Everybody said a hundred bucks, 150 tops. And when I would tell them 300 plus, I, I, no, I mean, it's just, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's very expensive. I could see this device sitting on the desk of somebody who is, you know, super tech savvy, probably has all the other handhelds and tech devices out there, you know, just something that would be sitting on someone's desk that people would walk by and go, wow, what the heck is that? And start a conversation. You know, that's what this thing does. But the fact that the software is a little bit buggy and also I ran into that issue where the battery disconnected, you know, those are deal killers, especially at that price. I mean, I assume that they're gonna fix these things once it finally launches to customers. We'll have to see. Although if they continue to include a screwdriver in the box that tells you that they expect people to probably have to be able to at least get into it, you know, sometimes on their own. So as you guys can tell, it's a little bit of a tough review for me because I do like the technology of it and I like the idea but I'm not entirely sure who it's for. And I do think it's definitely overpriced, but love to know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, if you wanna learn more about it, I will put a link to their website in the video description. And as always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.